Today I am talking to Frek Dirks, Dutch portrait photographer living and working in New York City. Enjoy. Hello, Frank. Welcome, welcome to Hi, Frames. What, yet, yet once again, right? We have talked before, but you know, just quickly to, to those who are watching, you are based in New York, right? I'm based in New York. Yeah. I have a studio on Union Square. We, yeah, we have known each other for, for a while now. I have been following you on your, on your journey, you know, as a photographer, you know, on your growth. Today you are running a studio, portrait, portraiture studio in New York City on Union Square. True. Uh, so quite a nice development, I would say. Yeah. So lovely yeah. to be able to rent that place. No, wonderful. So, so you know. So today, let, let's talk about your uh, portraiture. Mm -hmm. You know, you sent uh, you sent like twenty or twenty five images my way. So I, I looked through them. You know, I know my, uh, your work by now. But you know, looking at those new images, I again came up with a couple of questions. I will be showing, of course, your por portraits here on the on the screen mm -hmm. while we keep talking. You know, let, let's start with a kind of cliche question, but you know, let's tackle it once more. When, when photographing, uh, you know, people, having them in front of your camera, what is this most important part thing for you you are trying to capture on your images? What is it that you are after when, you know, creating those, those, those portraits? Well, that's, that's basically the big question, which I'm still trying to figure out. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's interesting what what happens in, in, in the studio when you take someone's portrait. And the question is, what actually are you doing when you take someone's portrait? And there are a couple of different ways to look at. Uh, one of them is what Helmut Newton did. And Helmut Newton said, well, I just photograph faces and bodies. Photographing someone's soul, he said, well, that doesn't exist. You just photograph someone, their yeah, physical appearance, so to say. So, so is, it, is it the same way for you or you are, no, you are no. still touching some of those people's souls or trying to, to reach them? Well, and then you have Peter Lindbergh, who was a really warm friend with the models. He had this really great friendship going on and you see a lot of trust in his photos and more in his on his level i guess another one is paolo roversi who wants to try for a, a deep human connection with his models he uh it's amazing because he shoots with longer shutter speed half a second in order to give the soul the time to reveal itself and, uh, i'm not on that level i guess <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Well, well, it's what I would love to go in that direction. But well. uh, so, you know, let's take a, a real life situation. There's a model, you know, entering, uh, or, or, a or a friend, for 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 that matter, you know, entering your studio, you're meeting. Mm -hmm. How does it translate? So you approach your vision. How does it translate into into you know a real life situation in terms mm -hmm. of? What's happening in the studio? Is it a conversation? What, what, what kind of conversation? How, how does it usually you know, work, uh, work out? Yeah, I, I see it as um, meeting someone. Most of the time, it's the first time you meet someone. And it, it's almost like having the camera as an excuse. That's the reason you're there, to photograph someone. But I see it also as a, as a great gift to be able to be with someone for an hour, one and a half, two hours. In normal life, that almost never happens. <laughs> so someone comes in, um, it starts with small talk, uh, getting to know kind of a feeling for the person uh, who is there. And then I just start. Do you, do you, you know, so let's, so, so a session takes like, like an hour on average? Uh, so yeah, an hour, one and a half, it's sometimes two hours. It's, it's do, do you shoot a lot of, of frames or um, rather taking your time? I'll take my time, but I'm not surprised when I end up with 800 photos. <laughs> okay. One session. And, and how, and I can imagine you, you know, having 
so many different people in the studio, right? Uh, mm-hmm. you, you are probably dealing with uh, uh, different kinds of, you know, personalities, characters, moods, and so on and so forth. Are you also playing it then kind of by ear, you know, reacting to to their, you know, exactly moods and, uh, you know, to their particular days? I mean, or you have some kind of a set of ideas or, you know, conversational tricks or whatever it might be in place that kind of work with everyone? Or you, no, I or is it really, is it really a one-to-one kind of, you know, situation happening in real yeah, life? It's, and it, it's quite organic. You never know what happens. Some people are more open for conversation than others you some models says a yes photograph me they don't reveal any personality they, and then okay. it's my my job to get them out of that model kind of thing and be more personal and sometimes that works sometimes it, it just doesn't and um, well that's uh, you can see that in and, the photos okay and now in terms of you know technical issues, the 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 the, the space you are working in, and so on, uh, can you tell us just roughly how big the studio is? The uh, studio is about two hundred square feet, I guess, but fifty square meter, I guess, something like that. So I can imagine. I I, I remember visiting you once, right, in your yeah. studio. So you have the the big big window so the window yeah. light coming in so it yeah it's, it a, it's a really high ceiling 14 feet so that's a bit over three meters high there's one huge window uh, facing north so i never have the direct sunlight in my studio and that's that, that's nice right <laughs> yeah it's, uh, we have um, the the whole gallery we have studios and there are some painters because painters love northern light that's what I work with. Well, I must say, so, for twice a year, I do have some sunshine in my studio because the, the grid in New York is not exactly north south. It's tilted a little bit. So, the, in, in, in spring and in, in autumn, I have some. In the morning, I have some light in the studio, which okay. gives a beautiful pattern on the wall. But that's only for three, four weeks, and then it's gone again. <laughs> Okay, so it's 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 relatively you know relatively compact space, right? Light coming in, I can imagine maybe. Are you working with artificial, you know, sources of of light as well? Uh, in the so, studio? Uh, sometimes, but I like to see it as a daylight studio. So yeah, so I prefer shooting yeah, I, daylight. I, I do have some strokes and other stuff. Yeah, in the evening uh, because, when it's dark, then I'll put up some strokes. But. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, why, why I'm asking because I, I know I'm looking through the images you sent, right? And uh, I can see pretty nice, you know, gamut. I would say of of kind of different light situations, different characters, different, you know, uh, juxtapositions of shadows and light, you know, mm-hmm. and so on. So it's actually amazing how many different looks you achieve in a in a relatively compact space, you know, with a one source of light. Yeah, and so on and so forth. So, how how does it work out? Like, what are you looking for? You you know you you are st- you start working with a model or with a with a guest, mm-hmm. you know, and the uh, camera in your hands. Mm-hmm. What what's happening inside you? What what are you reacting to? What are you? What are those split of seconds reactions you are trying to, you know, the, those moments you are trying to grasp on the camera? What yeah. what's important for you? Uh, the way I work. Uh... From the light perspective, I have two big V flats in, in my studio, and I try to sculpt lights. So I bounce light back, or with black, I create shadows. Uh, light is always coming from one direction. So if the model is facing the window, it's nice frontal light. If the is sideways, you have a kind of split lighting situation going on. With the black V flat, I add some drama. With white, I'll take drama away. That are my tools, basically, and can and I have the, the different backdrops. So, uh, okay, that are the tools I work with. I change lenses a lot. <laughs> I, I I had one camera, the D810, uh, so I change lenses a lot. Now I have a Z72. So now I have two bodies, and so I switch bodies now. <laughs> With the okay. lens of that, so that's me. And what happens is when I tune into someone, 
you start to see references to other photos saw in your life. And then, oh, oh now it should be my 50. And then, oh, no, 85. <laughs> Back to my 2470, 35, 50. So, okay. Uh -huh. it, and then it builds up. And what happens to me is I get a kind of, you know, when, when you really concentrate it, you lose idea of the world. The whole world shrinks into that moment, a very condensed yeah. time space thing, very intense. And then at one point you lose that somehow and then you zoom out again. And then the session is basically over. You can't get that back. That, that build. So you, you kind of feel it. The momentum is there and then you feel it is kind of dissolving again, right? Yeah, exactly. And Let's have a look at two particular images. So yeah. I chose, you know, to do. So the first one is a, of, of, a, of a young man. You know, it's a black and white portrait. Uh, a young man looking kind of into his, you know, left direction, looking away from the camera. It strikes me like a, as an extremely natural portrait. Mm -hmm. You know, like he seems to be really, you know, lost in his thoughts, uh, completely natural, still it's a studio shooting, you know, portrait situation. Yeah. So what what are these mom those moments? So like moments like this one. Do you feel it? Do you do you get a you know like a burning sensation? That's it. You have to click the shutter because he mm -hmm. probably really got lost in his thoughts about or maybe you suggested uh, he you know to him uh, to try you know getting lost in the thoughts. Yeah. Well, what's happening? Uh, this is a photo of Tarun. He's a young actor. And needed some uh, actors always need new new photos for the portfolio to show. So it started out with a normal portraiture session you work around, and at one point he took off his shirt, so he has this this white shirt on, and then I got a bit of this James Dean vibe from him. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, so that was my reference. Like, okay, this is familiar. And I, well, sit down. Uh, and because he's an actor, so you, if you give him that, I, I'm looking for that vibe, he will pick it up because he's an actor. So he kind of sings in, in that role at, at that moment. And yeah, those photos, you you know you have the photo when you take that one. No. So it's this moment, is this split of a second, you just you just feel it. You you have to press the sh shutter. That's it. You see it. Yeah, you're you working with it. With, you, yeah, you're it, working with the view fund, viewfinder, I imagine, right? Looking yeah, the view. It, it, it's testing. It, it's references in your head, and then that leads up to this moment, and then, bang, you have your photo, and then it's it. It's a little bit of a wind down. You, you play around a bit, but in your mind, you already know I have the shot. So. Everything I mean, it's relaxed. <laughs> absolutely stunning. This pool, you know, the lighting, you know, the, the 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 black and white treatment, everything is just top. Thank you. And by the way, for those of you watching, I mean, Frex work will be in the upcoming uh, edition. Yeah, of, thank of you. Frex I'm so magazine. So I, mean, I can't, I can't wait. You know, uh, I mean, I already had a glimpse. Actually, they are printing yeah. the magazine right now. So the, those images on paper, just uh, just wonderful. One more shot. Uh, do you remember which one? I think yeah, uh, I showed that's, you. Um, that's Nika. Kind of. Kind of Marilyn Monroe kind of uh, uh, vibe here. We had James Dean. Now you have a <laughs> Marilyn Monroe reference, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's with the blonde hair. Again, wonderful. Different character than the than the than the young man. How was oh. the vibe during the shoot? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Nika is much more introvert person who is one of my my, my favorite uh, models. Because she is what you see on the photo. She's kind of hiding. She's there, but not there. She's she's always this ambiguous figure for me. And I like, and it's fascinating to work with her. She's. Uh... Yeah, I was about to ask you about this amb ambiguity, right? Because her eyes are kind of yeah, her eyes are not visible here on the shot. Sure. But still, the portrait, at least with me, it's working extremely engaging. Yeah. So, yeah. What, what what would you say to 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 you know on this topic, the, the presence of, or or lack of it, 
of models eyes in the actual frame and how do you achieve this impactful you know frame you know without showing the eyes what is it here what how would you define it this photo for me is i guess i i really nailed her character this is how she presented herself in the studio and that's the vibe i picked up from her and uh, i think it's a very powerful photo it's a great example what you say that uh, even without seeing the eyes there, there is this real presence there is this person with this character you see in front of you yeah i mean definitely this is this is striking striking image Frank, what what what's going on in the studio? So so tell us just you know our viewers a bit more about. Uh, so you're running workshops, right? In yeah. the studio. I, uh, what what are what is it? Ever say what you know you you, as I said, your your business, your your portraiture grew quite a lot. So what are you offering these days? Uh, you know what uh, what can people uh, mm -hmm. get from you? You know and, and so on. Yeah, I'll, uh, I I rent out my studio for photographers. Kind of people who need space in, in the city to uh, have a base. I run workshops, uh, black and white portrait. One of my favorite workshops is uh, low light. We uh, start shooting uh, when there's light in the studio and then it gets dark, so around sunset. And we keep shooting till it's almost completely black in the studio. So I have a table, uh, the model on the table against the window to get some city lights on her nice huh? uh, and it's amazing how high you can shoot nowadays with iso and still get some amazing photos okay so it's so running workshops you know you can also rent your studio out there yeah you're also uh, shooting outside you're also shooting not only in the studio right you are taking no, no, the we're groups? having this um, uh, big city lights uh workshop where we take a model out on the streets in in yeah New York as, as your background. Yeah. And uh, we walk around for two hours, uh, finding interesting lights, uh, putting her there. I have a little softbox with some light on her uh, to shine. Otherwise, if you, the model is off. So I, I shoot against uh, sunset, then you have this beautiful dark blue sky and then it gets dark. But if you have her in front of, of window, uh, shop windows, it's always a silhouette photo, so you need to put some light on her, otherwise you have only silhouette photos. With okay. Her. And I, yeah, uh, I'm, a, I'm a coach, uh, so I uh, uh, coach people one-on-one, -on -one, tailor-made, so to say. So tell me what you want to learn, and I'll uh, make sure you learn that. Okay, great. Well, I will make sure I link to everything, you know, your website, your Thank studio, you and so, so on. Yeah. One last question just popped up, popped up into my mind, because yeah. I have been, as you can imagine, having a, you know, regular uh, conversations on artificial, you know, intelligence photography. Yeah. And uh, I had a couple of uh, conversations actually exactly with portrait photographers. You know, it's also affecting in some way or, you know, partially or starts affecting this industry. What are your thoughts on this, on, on AI, you know, quote unquote photography? coming into the into the space and like where do you see it as a portrait photographer or don't see it in the future well ai is will have a bigger impact than the invention of the steam engine it will dramatically change the whole society i guess it can't be stopped it's already there i saw in in, in some news thing that uh, levi's is the first um, fashion brand who will only work with ai generated images so no models no photographers no makeup artists just everything is generated in the computer because uh, it's it, it saves them a lot of money so yeah that's really bad news for uh, photography the commercial photography for me as a portrait i don't think it's a threat because i make photos from a person ai can never do that <laughs> What happens yeah, that's true, right? is, is, is made by men. So you, yeah, it, it won't affect me, but it will affect the, the photography industry, the, the whole graphic design industry. As a portrait photographer, you, you don't feel any particular threat. I, I'm trying to come up with, you know, scenarios where, where AI could even, you know, step in here. I mean, 
what about I'm taking, you know, a selfie of myself, feeding it into the AI generator and telling the, the generator to, you know, analyze my face and then put myself, you know, into, into, into uh, Frank Dirk studio on Union Square and so on and so forth, you know, and create a portrait of myself. Mm -hmm. probably probably doable in the future right oh yeah i think so if you somehow upload your own face and you tell ai um give me some photos from my holiday in paris and even if you weren't in paris it will generate some beautiful yeah. images as okay. if you were in paris the holiday photos yeah it will have a huge impact it's the same with music when we had the digital music everyone said well the all analog lp things will disappear well, they're back now. So, yeah, maybe it's a blessing in disguise and people will appreciate real photography more now they have all those AI images. Uh, that's exactly, yeah, that's exactly actually my thoughts. I think uh, the development itself is great. It's amazing. It's fascinating. But I think things will, you know, now we are talking about it a lot, right? Because it's it's something new. It's the, the entire hype is there. But I think these things will balance themselves themselves out you know and like you say the 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 value of real human creation uh, emotions i will start growing growing up again it's kind of like you know uh, c cds and then v vinyl records coming back you know exactly. not a, not an ideal uh, you know analogy but you know what i mean i think so i i would definitely prefer one of your you know portraits on my wall than, than something you know computer generated so i I don't feel the real danger. It will be a part of our world in the future, but work like yours, I think, will will stand out even stronger. That that that's my yeah, that's personal... my, yeah, because people will feel, yeah as a counter movement towards all those AI images. Uh, yeah, they will let, be there because it, it, it saves businesses a lot of money, so they they will embrace AI in in the workflow. So from if you uh, depend on photography as your main income, well, then you might be in trouble. But otherwise, yeah, the profession is, is in danger. But sports photography, not because you can't recreate it in, in, by AI. You're shooting that, that moment. That's true, and, right? Uh, so, yeah. That, <laughs> exactly, uh, yeah. Frank, thanks so much. Great conversation, so yeah. We, we connect. Can't wait to see your work in the magazine very soon. Uh, much, we yeah. stay in touch and uh, all about it. Yeah, talk talk soon. We stay in touch. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Sam. Bye bye.